kindergarten friends. I'm Miss Sarah and I'm your garden teacher. We have a beautiful school garden that we use as an outdoor classroom here at Cleveland. In fact, it's located right near the door to your hallway where you will come into school and where you will leave from carpool. So your classrooms are just right by the garden so you have a perfect spot. Okay. We do lots of fun learning here in the garden and I can't wait to meet you and see you in person when it's safe to be at school again. What we're going to do is we're going to send home lessons to you about every two weeks or so. There'll be videos with me here showing you things in the garden and then there will be assignments or exercises that you can do at home. And I can't wait until the time when we can all be here together in the garden again. When you're finished watching the video, there is a link to an interactive Google Slide activity that relates to the video. All right, let's go take our tour. I can't wait to show you around. Before we start the virtual tour, you can press pause to locate your Bulldog Garden map. We're getting started in our garden. First thing you'll notice, all our beds are labeled with markers. We have seven areas in our garden. So this is bed one. Everybody always knows where certain things are because you can refer to your map or your labels. Everything is also labeled. All the plants are labeled as well and vegetables. So there's lots of things to see. So first bed here, I have got some eggplants and we've got all different kinds of peppers. Now, something special about this bed, this is a project that you can expect when you do garden learning here when we're back at school. Last year we had a pizza garden project and by that I mean that each grade planted a different seed for a different ingredient to make up a pizza. And our first and second grade planted these peppers. So what we did is we planted the seeds in the winter or we sowed the seeds. We watched them sprout inside in little pots or germinate. When they got big enough into little baby plants, we moved them outside here in the spring and put them in this bed. When you move plants outside that way, it's called transplanting. And now you can see the baby plants are big enough to have their own fruit and it is time to harvest or gather in our crops and our fruits. So you can expect fun hands-on projects like that when we get back to school. Okay, let's move over here to bed two. In bed two, I have got cucumbers. Cucumbers grow as a vine like this, so we've even got an extra structure called a trellis that is supporting our fruit while it's growing. I wonder if you can see this back here. Here's an excellent example of a cucumber hanging. So in this bed, we've got cucumbers, and then in the side of bed two, we've got okra. It's a great example of our okra that we're harvesting right Let's now. Go on over to bed three. In bed three, We've got a nice line of late tomatoes here. We planted those a little bit later after we harvested our last winter crop that we had. This is garlic that was growing here right before we put the tomatoes in. Then over here at bed four, we've got our melon patch. We've got cantaloupe and watermelon growing in the same patch here. We've got a great line of sunflowers. You can eat, we've just been harvesting our sunflower seeds and you can see some nice melons hiding in here. Okay, so from bed four of the melons, let's go across the sidewalk over here to the main part of the garden. So one of the first things you might notice about our garden because your steps go right up past this every day is we've got a great strawberry patch that stays here year after year. We have a fantastic strawberry patch established so you get to eat fresh strawberries from your school garden. Over here in bed five, I've got some other things from the pizza garden project. The bed is mostly taken up by a huge amount of tomatoes. Our kindergarten class planted tomatoes last year as part of their uh, pizza garden project. We've also got several different kinds of the herb basil. That was planted last year by our third grade. Okay, from here, from bed five, let's just look a little bit more down the hillside. We've got some onions here. These are part of our pizza garden project. These were planted last year by our fourth grade who's now gone on to middle school. 
we've got gourds growing up so high and over another trellis in the back. That's another vining plant that looks a lot like cucumbers do. Okay, so here in bed six, we have a very special method of planting here. This is called our three sisters. It's a native style planting. It is large stalks of corn. If you can see, this is how corn grows. We've got beans that grow up around the corn like a trellis. And then we fill in the center with squash plants. That's our three sisters bed. Let me take you around the corner here where we have a large pollination area. We have certain areas of our garden that are set aside for vegetables and then we have certain areas that are set aside for flowers or things that pollinators like our bees and our butterflies like. So this is an example of a nice free landscape that we have that our butterflies and our bees really enjoy. to use a lot near where all our containers are. We'll have nice fresh hay bales here when we're back in school and this is an area where we can sit and have a nice time as a group or do some of our garden assignments. Back here against the back this is how asparagus grows. This is our asparagus patch which stays every year just like our strawberries do. It comes back year after year. show you what the view looks like from up high and we'll go through the end of our pollinator or our decorative areas back to where your kindergarten door is. I'm sitting here at our shade structure in our outdoor classroom. This will be a space where we will do a lot of fun lessons and a lot of garden learning together when we get back to school. So this week, part of our lesson, some really important concepts are weather and climate. Did you all know that weather and climate are actually two different things? The weather is what we talk about that's happening every day, like maybe it's rainy or it's sunny or it's windy. And you can kind of think about that as if I'm thinking about what should I wear today for the weather. And now our climate is when we talk about how weather is in our region or where we live over a long period of time. It's really a pattern of the weather. So when you think about that, you think about what type of clothes should I have in my closet for all year long? We wear different outfits at different times of the year and that is because our climate in Oklahoma, it's hot in the summer and it's cool in the winter. So this helps us know what to grow in our gardens in different seasons during the year. One of the first things that you'll learn in the garden, and this is a fact that goes through so many things, Plants and vegetables, basically the way we grow them can be two different categories. There's basically warm season plants or cool season plants and they grow according to the climate. Did you know we can grow food in Oklahoma all year long? We're gonna be growing in our garden through every season this year. So as we finish up, it's been so great to have the first garden lesson with you, new kinder friends. And I want to let you know what your very first garden assignment is going to be. You will be using your new garden science journals to write down your own observations about the weather by going outside each day and using your senses to determine what the weather is doing. You can set up your journal page like this with a place to record the day 
and a place to draw a picture about your weather observation. You can choose to write a word to label your picture or have your adults help you with this part. We've also included a fun optional activity of making your very own weather instrument if you would like. We have instructions on how to make a rain gauge. We have simple household items that you probably have on hand and you can make an rain gauge with an adult's help to help measure the amount of rain that falls. At the end it'll look just like this. You can put this outside and you can measure any rainfall as you're observing your weather. Thanks for coming on the tour of the garden, Bulldog Gardeners. I hope you can imagine what it looks like and we can't wait to see you and we can spend time together in the garden again.